What's up guys? So I normally don't stand in front of the camera and talk to you when it comes to install videos, but I've been reading some comments. Um, so we, we're going to do this video this way. We've got some improved lighting in here. Doors are shut so you won't hear my dogs. But today, we're installing this TransLogic Quick Shifter on my 2019 FTR. So this shifter will fit on every year model uh, FTR from 2019 onwards. Um, nothing changed there. There is not an auto blip option yet. It's only Quick Shifter. Um, but based on how much people want this particular shifter, based on demand, they can add that option later in. Um, I want to thank Toast Exhaust, uh, Dan and Justin, for uh, letting me try this out. Um, this is the first unit ever installed on FTR from TransLogic, so we're going to be working through this together. Um, I do have a set of instructions that are just kind of generic instructions. Um, but what we're going to do, I'm going to try and make this as easy as possible for you guys. So obviously to get to your, your rear spark plug and your air box, you have to take off your gas tank. Um, the easiest way to do that is to remove this side subframe. Um, I really don't want to do that for you guys today, so what I'm going to try and do is just loosen everything up a little bit and see if I can not just twist the gas tank around just so you can get access to this aft coil. Um, we're also going to be replacing my plugs since I have uh, 17,000 miles on this bike. Um, and it's due, so I think the last time I replaced it was 8,000 miles when I had it back apart. Just tinker with it. So we're gonna do that, see how the plugs worked out, and we're gonna see how this works out. Um, it's a really neat little um, little unit, and we'll shoot over to the workbench and check it out. So what comes in the box? Um, you will get a set of actual instructions. Um, obviously, like I said, this is kind of a generic set of instructions, and then it talks about uh, setting it up in the back there. Um, so we just use that as a guide. Obviously, you get your stickers, get a couple pieces of Velcro, per unit. These are the plugs I'm using. If you cross-reference the plugs that are come in the bike, these were the Iridium cross-reference. Um, I had these plugs in there for about four years now. Like I said, around 8,000 miles, so I'm already going to be in there, so I'm just going to replace them and clean the air filter where I'm at it. And here is your actual smart unit. Obviously it has all your, your LEDs on it and everything, so you want to mount this somewhere that uh, you can easily see if it's working or not. You obviously don't want to start your bike up, ride it, and then expect a quick shifter to work, and there be an issue with it. So that'll tell you right away. And then on the back here, you have all your little set screws. I already went ahead and put some Velcro in here. We'll discuss where I'm gonna mount mine uh, after this. And what I think I may have to do, they want this to go directly to the negative battery terminal. I might just find a ground back on my back frame and put it to, or I might actually extend this wire, um, put a nice splice in it, and actually I'll go all the way down to the battery. Since most bikes have the battery right near where you would actually mount this, the FTR is all the way in the front, as you know. Um, and here is the main piece of equipment. So when you buy the FTR kit from Toast, it already comes with this. It's already perfectly measured, so you don't have to do any extra rods or anything. You do have a little bit of room of adjustment here that you can move this in or out. Uh, to move your uh, shift lever up and down. Then here is your coil mount. So obviously all this does just splices in your, in your forward and aft coils. Unplug your OEM coil and plug this right back in. Then this goes to your little computer. Gives you plenty of zip ties and then a little screwdriver that you can sit there and adjust your settings. So I've had this thing apart so many times um, with all my other Tinker mods. You can go back on all my old YouTube videos um, between the license plate mount, checking the valves, spark plugs, airbox, all that crap. Uh, so I pretty much, I can have this thing stripped down um, within 10, 20 minutes, but we're gonna take our time since we're doing a YouTube video. Uh, I believe in 2022, they changed these from a, a star bit to an actual Allen key, but you need a, if you have a 2019, you need a T40 bit, take these, Handles off on both sides. And like I said, I've done this so many times. Pretty easy for me. Um, I would suggest using power tools, but we are going to try and keep this video somewhat brief. Obviously, do not use power tools when reinstalling any of this hardware. Because as many people know, this subframe is very soft aluminum. And then your seat bolts are just six millimeter. All 
pops up like that. What we're going to do next is move up here to the front. Um, obviously, if you have a locking gas cap, you're going to need to put your key in here and take that off. But I don't, so I got a fancy one. So these are just four millimeter Allens, nothing special. And then this just pops right off like that. Uh, never mind any of the stuff going on there, that doesn't concern anybody. We're gonna go back to our six millimeter. Take off these two back screws. And then our tank panels just pop right off. Here comes a time where you would need to put your key back in your gas cap and remove gas cap. I've got this nice smelly dog prototype unit, which I don't have to deal with that. And up here, got a 10 millimeter. And then, And two more 10 millimeters up top. Now for this thing, this is just a piece of rubber, it goes in there like that. For this little plastic thing on your key holder, or your, uh, your ignition, what you're gonna do is, you're just gonna take it and twist off. Um, as you can see, just twist on and off. So pretty, pretty simple, idiot proof design. And this, this comes off. Don't drop your washer like I just did. And then what you can do is uh, obviously just put your gas cap back on. So you're not filling your, uh, your garage up with fumes. And then we're gonna pop this cover off and get our air filter out of there. All right, now while that's in outside drying, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bracket off, this bracket off, and the taillight off, all 10 millimeter bolts, and they're all the same length. So you don't need to worry about where they go. Obviously these brackets only go on one way. That's pretty idiot proof to, uh, obviously it's not gonna fit that way, so that's pretty easy. And for the tail light, it's usually easy just to get this uh, screwdriver in there, just pop that connector right off. And now what we're going to do is, let's see here, it's been a minute. Uh, there's two 10 millimeter bolts back here, and there's a 10 millimeter bolt up there that actually holds your gas tank in place. Now these have large washers on them. So now as you can see, I guess things pretty loose. Um, I do think I'm gonna have to end up taking this, this cover off and then I think we can just shift this over. So the reason why we're working from the left hand side of the bike is to take this cover off of this side you have to take your shock off and in order to do that you have to put a jack underneath your engine which is no fun so if you don't need to take this off um, don't 
One little thing I will have a little bit different than other people, unless you have this toast plate mount, obviously, is the toast plate mount. So to take this side off, I'm just gonna undo these two screws here and then just leave the mount um, attached over there. So what we're gonna do to take this off is we're gonna take these two Allens off up here, these two screws, and then these two big Allens. Um, we'll talk about reinstalling these um, when we go to put the bike back together, but you gotta be very, very careful with these two screws up here. So careful, in fact, I am using a ratchet and not the impact. Um, these are five millimeter Allens, by the way. down here and take these two side screws out of my plate mount. We're going to break these loose. Hold this up so you don't it fall and you don't want to scratch it. And there you have it. You have your uh, left hand subframe off the bike. All right, so as you can see, uh, so I just disconnected some connectors. Um, obviously, a bunch of this stuff is all my uh, plate eliminator stuff. You wanna disconnect your front vent hose and then your aft vent hose and just kinda let them sit. But we were able to just pick it up and shift it over and now we have access to our rear coil. That's easy enough. Um, I'll come over here and show you. If you do wanna take your tank off and you do wanna make this easier, obviously, you won't have this stuff, this is my fender loaner stuff, but you will have your fuel line. And to take these off, you press down, push in. Let's see here. Press down, push in, and pull out. And then that's how the fuel lines come off of these. Um, like I said, press down the blue thing, push in, and then push off. Now I need to wipe all the fuel off. Another thing to note for the fuel line in this tank is over here, you have this little slot right here. So as you can see, here's your fuel line. Um, when you go to set this back in, make sure this fuel line is back in that slot. Um, obviously it's, a little, it's flexible, it goes right in. If you don't, what's gonna happen is you're not gonna get this to sit flush and you're gonna pinch your fuel line. So that's an important step. Now I could take this tank completely off, but I really don't want to deal with all this wiring and mess again. So we're just going to leave it sit like this for you guys at home. If you don't want to completely remove it, it's just in one less step. So obviously, here's your rear coil. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take an air box off, and that includes taking these Allens out, and then there's one down in there. Those three out, if I remember correctly. So those are just pull right out like that. And then on this other side here, you have your two crankcase breather hoses. And they just pull right off.
All right, since my nice expensive brand new GoPro likes to overheat, sitting inside my garage with fans running, uh, missed it. So anyway, so I got the front air plugs out. It's a eight millimeter nut. Obviously it's the same in the front. Then you get a coil there. And then it is a five eight socket spark plug socket. Use a nice six inch extension and a normal ratchet. And then I use a magnet to get in there and pull them out. So like I said, these spark plugs have, uh, I don't know, probably close to 10,000 miles on them. Um, they're a little sooty, but they are a nice golden brown down the bottom. So no, I don't see any issues there. And then what we're going to do is just throw these new ones in. I like to put a little dielectric grease on the tips. So we're going to throw these back in and let my GoPro Pro cool off again. All right, the joys of being the first to do something. Um, if you go in through here, even I looked online where these were colored, it doesn't really give you any information. So if you see on the front and rear, same uh, red, black, white, red, black, white. Come over here to our harness. You see, not red, white, white. We've got blue, gray, 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 black. And then you have over here, and you have green, gray, gray. So I'm not sure which one is the front cylinder, which one's the rear cylinder. Obviously, one of these has this extra black wire. Uh, so I'm gonna contact Toast and see what they say. See if they contact TransLogic. And for the time being, we are gonna work on this linkage down here. Um, and then I'm going to actually extend that wire because if you look in the instructions, it says it must be connected to the negative battery terminal. So the orange is going to start here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it and then I'm going to splice it, run it down, and then connect it to my negative battery down there. All right, so this is why I love dealing with smaller companies. Um, I called Toast. Toast called Logitech, and they give them an answer right away. So it said that the intelligent, uh, the computer will adapt. Um, so as you see, one has four wires coming off of it. This one has three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just uh, stick this four wire one on cylinder number one, the forward one, and call it a day. So let's we'll see how it works. But since I'm already down here and I already have the camera set up, we're gonna go and install the, the sensor down here. So if you look at the instructions, it has it going this way, so it wants the wire going forward. So obviously this is the same sensor, but with a bunch of different applications. For this one, we don't need a different application, or we don't need any rods, because it's gonna go in right like that. And it's set just about where my stock one is. Um, obviously I have the Indian Gills rear sets, and then the GSX-R uh, shift arm on here, that not everybody will have, but you should have, because the shift arm is amazing. And if I was a betting man, I'm going to say that this isn't going to all work without moving this. So I'll take this back one off first. And they are number 10s. I got the wrong one. So I'm just going to remove the back one first. All right, let's pop those out. As you can see, it's gonna sit just like that. Um, and then this just jicks her arm. It's this little bushing that goes up there. Uh, so with this GSXR arm, uh, these come off eBay. I'll throw a link in the description where to buy them. They're like 13 bucks. Uh, what this does is it moves your point, your shift point up further, and it shortens your shift throw, um, especially on the 2019 bikes. That had the clunkier transmissions this greatly helped reduce false neutrals from one to two and from five to six so great easy cheap mod this mod this one also fits all your ftrs and fits the challenger so so we're going to install this front one first and the upper hole Come back here, install the back one.
so there we have it. Um, it is slightly lower, so I think I'm just going to move this up because I want this to remain in the 6 o'clock position and I don't really feel like messing with that stuff down there. Um, next task is going to be figuring out how to run this wire. So if I remove this, there's a bunch of wires behind there. So I think what I can do is pull this off. I'm going to loop it up through here like this and back up in. Obviously, I have my cover off, so what you would do is you take your cover off and then this comes off with it and then you can run your, run your wire. So let's get this off next. All right, well, to get to this bottom one, I had to remove my rear set anyway, so that would have been just a lot easier. So anyway, with this off, and then as you can see, this harness is back in here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed it in through the bottom here. And then just loop her all the way to the top and back out. I'm gonna put my cover right back on. All clean and hidden. All right, so what I did was I took this uh, this shielded wire out of here first, um, and then I took my sensor wire, shoved it all the way back in, and then pushed this wire back in. Here are my connectors, and uh, that harness has more than enough. Uh, wire to get to these connectors with it routed all the way through so when I put the case server back on here or when you put your spark cover back on here you won't even see it um, for a bunch of people did ask me how I was running this without the cover well, basically what you do is you take this take that all off you take your case saver you paint it black and then put a couple washers on your bolts and then your bolts go back in so you don't have to cut anything and then as you can see this bike has 16, 17,000 miles on it. Everything's nice and spotless inside there. You don't have to worry about all the grease and crap dripping down. Um, so I'm gonna put my cover back on and then we're gonna put my rear set back on then we're gonna move to the top. Then we're all wrapped up. So as you can see, if you look back in there, um, I have plenty of free play for my wires not binding on anything when you go to up or down shift. Uh, so there are two connectors on this. One is for push, one is for pull. So obviously when we're, so you can do MotoGP shift if you want, or depending on where this rod sits. Um, I just do standard shift. I'm not a big fan of MotoGP shift. So when I upshift, I'm going this way. So as you can see, it's pushing on this sensor. Um, if you were to do MotoGP, you'd be pushing down the shift up, you'd be pulling on the sensor. Um, I forget which is which, but it's in the instructions which color goes to your push. So we are going to go with the push option to come up like that. So that's all buttoned up there. Let's put the harness on our new coils. Um, when my GoPro was cooling off, I went ahead and put in my new plugs, um, front and rear. So let's get this harness routed. All right. So what I did was Looked up the front coil, and what I did, so I just ran it, ran the harness along here, under here, back here, hooked up this one, um, and then what I'm going to do is with all this excess, I'm just going to, I think, bundle up and stick it back here. Not entirely sure yet what I'm going to do with it. So this harness is a bit too long, but the negative harness is a little too short. Um, so what I did was, you may not have to do this when you get the kit, um, obviously, this is the first kit installed. So that I don't think they really knew where the battery was located. But uh, as you can see, battery's down there. We need the harness to go up here. But it was, I just got about five feet of wire, my own little terminal on it. And then what I'm gonna do is, while everything's still apart, I'm gonna run my wire down through here and connect it down here to the negative battery terminal. And I'll just leave this end where I need it. And then I'll cut it off and I'll splice it into the connector that's gonna plug back into this harness. So with it ran up from here, kind of just followed the OEM black harness, ran it back through here, tucked it back in there, um, then I have it sitting here. So I probably cut about like two feet off this and be more than good. And like I said, if you wanted to, you take this panel here um, and mount your controller behind here. It's just three Allen keys and it can come on and off. If you want to hide it a little bit better, if you don't have a track receipt, like I said, we're gonna just hang all this stuff here. I might tidy this up just, just a hair. And I don't think that's gonna hit anything. And let's put our air box back on. Okay, so with the air box on, 
Um, basically, you kind of get these snorkels in, as you can see there. You want your snorkels to be in, and then these two pop in over here. Um, and then I come down here, it's really hard to see, um, but there isn't much room at all in there. Um, I did wiggle the airbox around and make sure there's plenty of room. It wasn't actually binding on anything before I locked her, locked her down in. Put that back on, put this on. I'm over here. Easiest way I found for the airbox was to leave this back hose off of the cylinder, but connected to up here. And then what you can do is reach, oh, sorry, reach down there. So remember there's two hoses, one for each cylinder, uh, cylinder head. Um, so leave this one, the lower one off of the airbox, but on the cylinder head. So when you pop the airbox on, you can just stick your finger right up in there and uh, reconnect it. So as you can see, the coils are up there. Uh, remember what I was telling you about this fuel line. So you kind of get it situated where you want to and obviously the bend, it kind of just goes where it needs to go. And then as you can see, also up in there, we have our coils um, and it should theoretically fit because I don't have that one sitting up any higher. So I'm just gonna maneuver this in and get her back on. And I want to look down here and make sure I'm not actually hitting my coil. I don't believe. Okay. So no wires are even bound up. It might be good. Yes, I do not want to take this back apart. Alright, we're good. So we're gonna go back ahead and then to reconnect this fuel line. It's super easy. Just pops right back on. Make sure that's all good. We have our vent hose. I'm going to reroute this how it needed to be. So you just go back to the beginning of the video and see how this is all, all set up. Um, so I'm going to get working on that and come back. All right. So what you want to do is you want to route your fuel pump connector and your taillight connector up through this groove right here. Make it all nice and clean. Uh, disregard this. This is my plate stuff. It doesn't matter. Um, put that back in so then I'm going to zip tie this all nice and neat up here uh, should give me plenty of room to stick that access stuff up in here because um, that seat kind of sits kind of high off here and then this is where I'm going to put the actual uh, computer unit um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to put this side piece on take these two bolts out And obviously you want to make sure that you're not pinching any wires when you put this on. All right, so what I want to do is get both of these started and then we'll come back here and you'll see how finicky this back piece is put on. Come around back here. You want to keep this nice and loose so you can get these two halves lined up. You do not want to strip these subframes out. So get one started. Get the other one started. Now that they're started, or now that they're tight, it's not going anywhere. Now you can come back over here and torque these two down, as well as make sure 
that you don't have anything binding or pinched in here. Um, and then these my plate lights, I kind of just run them right here so you can even see. This so hides everything. But always make sure you don't have anything binding. I see people blowing fuses all the time. They think it's the ECU because their lights aren't working. Um, nine times out of ten is when they do their tail tidy. Something gets bound up here. Um, and guys are short. So I'm going to work on cleaning this up a little bit. I'm going to put the tail light back on. I'm going to go get my filter and put that back in. And put this front panel back on. And maybe start it before I put it completely back together. Alright, so what I did was I took... Uh, the OEM connector here and just spliced it into my ground that I have to my battery and then we have it down here. Uh, the push is the blue green and the pull is the red yellow so what I did was I put a little heat shrink around the red yellow that I'm not going to be using and we're going to tuck that all up in there. And then what this guy is going to do, he's going to sit right there just like that. And then this is going to connect to this. And if I did everything right, the bike should start. So let's see what she does. Um, so I put the tail light back on, fuel pump's connected, all my other stuff's connected. Power's up. Not sure what the sensor is supposed to do. Air connected. We have no warning lights. So let's see if it starts. Fuel pump primed. Success. So, so the sensor goes off whenever you pull enough pressure on this. Um, as you saw when I was clicking up on the gears, it was clicking the thing. So even with me pulling the clutch in and pulling up on it, you can slightly hear the the, uh, the ignition cut. Um, <clears throat> so you do have to be deliberate with your gear shifts on this, but it does learn. Um, and as far as your sensitivity and your cutoff times and everything, that's all back here. So you can fine tune this in. So I might have to do that. We're not sure yet. So that makes me happy. Um, so I can put everything back together. I'm actually gonna curious to see how long that actually stays on with the key off. So I'm gonna start buttoning everything up. Let my filter dry out in the sun a little bit more since I oiled it. Put this back in and then we should be able to go for a little rip tonight before the rain hits. Alrighty, so I did just recycle the key but this actually turned off after like a minute or two. Um, so that's good to know. Um, what I forgot to mention was you want to put this on and torque this down and then put your fuel tank bolts in. There's the two here and the one up here um, because this will move around a little bit. Um, and then you're going to want to put this on and this on. So also what you want to make sure is you don't want anything binding in here. So I have everything looped around but there's nothing and it's zip tied but there's nothing binding when you put this bracket on. So everything fits on this bracket, that means that the seat is gonna go on and nothing's gonna hit. And as you can see, it just turned off. So that is all buttoned up. While we're here, got, still got plenty of coolant, so I'm, I'm just gonna check over everything that I did.
there we have it back together and it is 631 so again going out and getting my filter drying it off putting everything back together had the whole thing back together and what 10 minutes so what i did was i left this out you can see a little bit more of the wiring than i originally anticipated um, but there's really nothing much i can do about that but i wanted to leave this up out to make sure that i can still pop it up in there and then i can still see my uh, my sensor readouts there so that's still good to go maybe there we go wasn't straight okay so um so everything's nice and tucked up in there obviously unless you know what you're looking for you're not going to see this and again if you don't have the tracker seat you can always put it here uh, you could even make a, a little mount with some Adele clamps and stick it there. But there's tons of possibilities. But that's where I put mine. Um, let's go out. We'll do a couple easy pulls with it. Alright, I got everything buttoned up on her. I did a double check on everything I did. Got a little GoPro down here to see if we get any fireballs coming out. Um, I'll go up and down the road a couple times and, uh, like I said, do as partial funnels like it wants. And then we'll rip it and see what she does. Alright, I did a couple loops around the block. Um, just to get the temperature up. I don't want to be shifting on a cold trance. So we'll do a... Uh, hit a medium throttle and we'll do two, three, and then three, four. See how she feels. If she feels strong, we'll loop back around and we'll do a uh, wide open pull. might get me into trouble uh, I'm gonna have to put the GoPro on that at night and see what it does because I can only imagine how the flames shoot out 
Uh, one thing I did, cutoffs are fine. Uh, shift force was a bit too much, um, but luckily it's right there, so I can adjust it. Go over here to the instructions. Um, it's basically just like setting your suspension, turn a dial one click at a time. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back uh, counterclockwise one click to see if, how that works. Um, like I said, you're just gonna do second, third, third, fourth. Um, those gears weren't too bad, but yeah, that first, the second, and then the fifth, the sixth was a little rough, which is to be expected with the FTR transmission. That's just the way they are. Um, in 2022 and forwards, they changed some shift forks in there to make shifting a little bit smoother, which it is much smoother. Um, so these bikes should be fine with it. I gotta tinker with this one a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna go in, upload this video as soon as possible. Thanks guys for watching. If there's anything else you need to know, um, I'll put a link in the description for my Instagram. You can DM me there. These are for sale right now on Tosa's website. I want to say they're $470 or $570. I can't exactly remember. Uh, there are a couple other brands out there. This one has a different, different uh, brand to it. And then there's, yeah, there's a couple other brands, but this one seems to be the best value for your money and you can get the auto blipper in the end. But thanks for watching. Let me know if you like the lighting and everything else we did differently in this video. Um, again, I'll put the link in the description for Toast. Thanks for watching.